and welcome back to Self-Sufficient Conversations. My name is Natalie and today I'm going to show you how I make yogurt. First, I heat five liters of milk on the stove on low. I want to get it to 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit. This will take some time. It took me about 45 minutes. Once it reaches 90 degrees Celsius, I put it in a sink of cold water to bring it down to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it comes down to around 40 degrees Celsius, it's time to add in my probiotic yogurt starter culture. I used to use some of my old yogurt from the previous batch to um, inoculate my new batch of yogurt. But when I did a cheese course, he recommended not to do this because you can start introducing different bacteria into the mix. And I found really good results in using this starter powder. A little batch of powder will allow you to inoculate 250 liters of milk. And I just use a little pinch in my five liters of milk, give it a good stir, and then I pop it into clean sterile jars and then put it in the dehydrator or somewhere warm. You wanna keep it at 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 hours. After you have allowed it to ferment for 12 hours, you can pop it in the fridge to cool down. Now I'm going to make labna with my yogurt. It's used like a cheese, but it's really just strained yogurt. I don't put any milk solids or milk powders in my yogurt because I don't like adding that. It's just um, another process, another step, and I like to keep it as simple and as process-free as possible. I find that my yogurt's really nice and thick anyway, so I don't need to add in any um, milk powders to thicken it up. But this labna is really good to make a savoury cheese with or even a sweet dessert like a cheesecake. So let me show you how to make that now. First you need to strain your yoghurt. You need to pour it into a colander, you can line it with cheesecloth cloth if you like but I just use a colander with small holes and you need to let it drain for 8 to 24 hours. The longer you leave it, the thicker the yogurt or the labana is going to become. So all the whey will drain out of this and you can use it for something else if you want. You can use it in a cake, you can put it in a smoothie. You can use it to lacto-ferment vegetables. In the meantime, I'm going to make the topping for my healthy cheesecake. This is basically an upside down version and I'll be using berries from the garden and I'll be sweetening the yogurt with honey and then I'll be making the crust which is just a really nice crunchy granola. So I'm going to melt a couple of tablespoons of a couple of tablespoons of coconut oil. I'm going to add in a couple of tablespoons of honey. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then I'm going to mix in a couple of cups of oats a couple of handfuls of bikinis or buckwheat, a couple of handfuls of hemp seeds, a couple of handfuls of pumpkin seeds or pepitas, and a couple of handfuls of sunflower seeds, and a couple of handfuls of shaved coconut. I'm going to give this a really good mix and then I'm going to pop it into a baking tray and cook it at 160 degrees Celsius for about half an hour, stirring it regularly because you don't want it to burn. Once it's nice and golden, you, you can pull it out of the oven and allow it to cool, mixing it every now and again so you get nice chunks of granola. I'm going to go outside and pick some berries. You can use anything that you have. You can use frozen berries for this too. At the moment I have boysenberries and 
and loganberries in season, so they'll be perfect in this. You could also use strawberries or mangoes, passion fruit would be lovely in here. And you could also use stone fruit, which is also at the peak of their season now too. The next step is to macerate the berries, which is just letting them sit with sugar. I'm using honey um, and mashing them up a little bit to let their natural juices come out. So this will be at the bottom of my cheesecake cups for a little bit of a sauce and this will be the main flavoring for the cheesecake. Now I'm going to make my cheesecake filling. I've mixed up my labneh, it's still a little bit thin but I don't mind it thinner in the cheesecake especially because it's in the cheesecake cups. And I'm going to add to this a couple of teaspoons of, vanil of vanilla extract and a couple of tablespoons of runny honey. This is from our hives and it's from last year. And now to assemble. I pop in a couple of tablespoons of macerated berries at the bottom and then I top up with labna or the cheesecake filling and I repeat this step until the glass is two thirds full. My granola is lovely and golden and toasty and now I just need to let it cool before I top my cheesecake cups. I'm also going to make labna cheese. This is delicious spread on sourdough toast. So first I need to toast my spices for my za'atar mix. Into my cast iron frying pan I add a tablespoon and a half of sumac one tablespoon of dried oregano, one tablespoon of sesame seeds, one tablespoon of sea salt flakes, half a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg, two tablespoons of fresh thyme, one tablespoon of coriander, and one tablespoon of cumin. I need to toast this on a low heat until it becomes lovely and fragrant and then I'll let it cool before topping my labna yogurt. I spread my labna yogurt on a plate and I sprinkle the cool za'atar mix over, over the top. I'm only using about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons for this. You can use more, it's totally up to your own taste. The rest will store in an airtight jar in your cupboard. I'm also going to drizzle some olive oil over the top. I hope you enjoy making these recipes and I'll see you next time on Living the Dream Permaculture. Goodbye.